Greetings, everyone. David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness, author of Qigong for Beginners, Your Path to Greater Health and Vitality. I highly recommend checking out the book, uh, get a little slice of who I am and what I do and what I've done. Uh, Qigong master, medical Qigong master, uh, black belt in Taekwondo, black belt in karate, black belt in Kempo Karate, uh, practitioner of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, teacher of Jeet Kune Do and Filipino martial arts, Aikido teacher, uh, the list goes on. Uh, really steeped myself in those disciplines, uh, studied psychology at the University of Connecticut, emergency medical technician training uh, there as well, and then uh, four years of molecular cellular biology. So a little bit of my background, healed my own spine of a spinal disease that the doctor said would cripple me by the time I was uh, 30 years old, I managed to reverse that spinal disease uh, just shy of turning 30 years old. And at 53 years young, uh, I am continuing on with my teachings. Uh, became known in my late teens as a healer and started working with people and have worked on uh, thousands of people really. Um, over the years, individually, hundreds of people, and then even more uh, if we get into what I've done online and what I do online as a medical Qigong teacher who has a certification program and trains other instructors and Qigong instructors and has distance healing programs and so on. All right, so just a little bit of background for those of you who don't know me. All right, jumping into the topics for today, okay? Sex shamanism and soulmates some interesting topics right sex shamanism and soulmates all right let's get into it so first of all sex they say it sells right sex sells you've heard that statement before sex sells it does and um but a lot of people don't have a deeper understanding about sex and what sex is and what sex translates to from a Qigong master's perspective, which is the perspective you're going to be getting from me today. So shamanism is an aspect of Qigong practice. It's an aspect of medical Qigong practice. And there are practices of shamanism that uh, come from the Far East. And then, of course, there are shamanic practices related to Native American practices. And then there are shamanic practices related to uh, different uh, places and different regions of the world, like Peru, Peruvian shamanism, and so on and so forth. Uh, so a lot of people who know me today as a medical Qigong master and a martial arts uh, instructor and all of that, uh, a lot of them don't actually know that I have a uh, vast background in shamanic practices and uh, have studied with shamans extensively, uh, etc. Uh, on top of the uh, more surface, so to speak, in my life these days of the traditional Chinese medicine that I teach and then I share with people. I also have a very vast background in various shamanic practices. Um, I grew up when I was a kid, I was very intuitive and very um, sort of psychic, uh, if you will, if you wanna use that word, um, which I've used along the way too, as well, to describe myself in the earlier years. But when I was, uh, the, when I was seven months old, the first word out of my mouth was the word light. And by the time I was a year old, I was speaking uh, full sentences and I was saying things about flying over the moon and stars and you know other universes and uh, That kind of got shut down as I started to get older because it really didn't fit in with uh, my family's traditions My mom was raised Catholic went to Catholic school. My grandmother who also raised me was very Catholic um, my dad was uh, pretty much agnostic um, raised Protestant slash agnostic and uh, his mom sort of became my grandmother. She became um, atheist as time went on. And uh, uh, so as I 
were was saying certain things and so on it was being shut down like we don't talk like that here we don't do that here you know whatever and so uh little by little uh i started to um hide away from from that I, I would hide myself away from the outer world i used to like to go to the forest a lot in fact i would skip school and go to the forest i would disappear into the forest um for hours at a time when I was a kid, we lived in an area that was very, it was like rural upstate New York, um, where I grew up with my mom and dad. And then my uh, grandparents, they were in the inner city of Syracuse, like literally right on the edge of sort of the innermost part of the city. So there was a lot of um, different cultural dynamics and uh, gang activity and different things going on in, in that neighborhood. So I had a different experience there. But anyway, I would go to the forest and I would try and spend uh, as much time there as possible. And I just really didn't have any fear of being out there alone or anything. I would just go out there and spend, you know, extended periods of time walking around and, and doing my thing and just sort of connecting with nature. Anyway, uh, that story ha continues today. Um, I find that trees and our natural world, which of course is being destroyed left and right, um, it's so amazing, you know, Jesus said, for example, seek not outside yourself. And so many of us are so desperately desperate and we're seeking so much more outside of ourselves. The more desperate we get, the more we seek outside of ourselves rather than turning back and going inward. Everybody just keeps going further and further outside of ourselves. It's kind of crazy and it is, um, but, uh, it'd be easier to come back, you know, but, um, uh, the forest, the trees, have great chi. They have great energy, um, especially around water. And it really feeds us, and it feeds us that very subtle kind of chi that cannot be found in a can of Coca-Cola, which is very artificial. It cannot be found in, um, you know, the remnants of it can be found in broccoli, for example. Organic broccoli's got some really good chi. Um, but the forest is also like still alive. That broccoli is on its way to transitioning. So the sooner you eat it, the better. But anyway, the forest is alive. It's living, it's breathing. And there is a profound energy there. And s people are so disconnected from nature today that um, don't worry, we'll get to the sex thing. Don't worry. If you're excited about the sex thing, don't worry, we're going to get to it. But I told you sex, shamanism, soulmates. Okay. And I'm a Qigong master. So we need to talk about Qi. And we're in the forest, okay? Really, really good energy. And what does the forest have to do with sex? The, what the forest has to do with sex is, is that the forest has what we call Jing. It has essence. And in the Chinese medicine practices and in the Taoist practices, without Jing, without essence, you cannot build your Qi. Okay, so we can think of that as Jing Gong. I don't want to give you too many names or words or whatever to confuse you, but we talk about Qi Gong. The, the average public talks about Qi Gong. The average population that knows about Qi development in China talks about Qi Gong. But the deeper work is Jing Gong. Okay, it's the essence, uh, energy. Qi Gong is a little more generalized, but anyway. So when we go into the forest, we rebuild our Jing, we rebuild our essence. Holding a tree, hugging a tree, a lot of people will joke and laugh about that. They say, oh, David, you do that because you lived in Boulder and you were a tree hugger. I am a tree hugger. I still, I still hug trees to this day and you can call me a tree hugger, that's just fine. You might even see me in the local parks actually hugging the trees or holding the trees. Um, who's the crazy one? Am I the crazy one that's hugging the trees or are you the crazy one that's not hugging the tree, you know? You won't know until you go hug a tree. The most powerful potent trees all year long are the ones that stay green all year long. Go hug them uh, and connect with them and sit near them. And for the average person, honestly, you're going to have to spend four hours in the forest. Um, one hour isn't going to cut it. I mean, one hour is better than nothing. But my point is, is that many of you won't even notice that it has done anything to your energy until you're out there for four hours, until you've gone camping out there. And if you go camping out there, don't turn up, don't watch your cell phone all night. Don't watch your TV all night. 
Because if you want to gather that subtle energy of the forest, then you have to sit there and resonate with the forest. When you come in, you're not resonating with the forest. You're vibing to something totally different. You sit there long enough and now you're starting to resonate with the forest. That becomes very profound. This rebuilds your sexual energy. Your sexual energy is not just your sexual energy, guys. It's your energy. You know, when you see somebody and you're like, wow, they got a lot of energy. That person has a lot of sexual energy. Okay. If you do not have sexual energy and it doesn't mean you have to use it for sex. It just means your charisma, your energy, your chi, your vitality. If you don't have that, then guess what? Your sexual energy is diminished because all energy at its root, and this is the color of the root chakra um, that I'm wearing today, all of that energy begins at the base and you either have energy and vitality or it all is being depleted and diminishing. And as it diminishes, you as a physical being begin to diminish. You're still an immortal soul. You'll still go on, but your physical capacity begins to diminish. So if you want a strong physical capacity, you need to get to the forest. That's number one. Uh, you want to build your jing. You want to build your sexual energy, your energy for sexual um not just sexual experience, but alchemy, sexual alchemy, gathering energy, gathering vitality. The idea behind Qigong in general, right, and somewhat specific, is the skilled cultivation of universal life force, the skilled cultivation of qi, in this case, the skilled cultivation of jing, which basically means like your jing account or your, your um, qi account building up your energy and understanding that everything that you do either adds to it or takes away from it. So if you want to hear more about soulmates, stick around because I'm going to get to that story, but I'm starting it out with your energy, sexual energy, connecting with the forest, which is a very uh, Qigong thing to do. It's also a very shamanic thing to do. All right. Now let's bring in this idea that the Buddhists would share and, and teach. And the Buddhists, for example, will say that no one can make you feel anything. You make yourself feel whatever you feel. You can feel bad about things. You can feel good about things. You can see a horrible thing and have compassion for it and still feel better than feeling really bad or really miserable. It's a practice. Uh, your friend can come in and tell you a, a horrible story. Oh my God, this horrible thing happened. It's terrible. You don't understand. And it's going to be horrible. And you can look at them and you can smile with compassion. And you can smile with an internal knowing. And you can acknowledge the light that lives inside of them. The power that lives inside of them. The connection that they have to God on the inside or spirit or source or Tao. Whatever you want to call it. And you can acknowledge that and you can look at that and you can see that and you can feel that in that moment and you can smile and you can say, I think, I think this is going to work out for you. I know this is happening for some reason that maybe we don't know, but I, I can really see that this is going to work out for you very well. You can't see it right now, but give it a month or two and this is going to work out very, very well for you. You can support that idea through prayer, through validation, through intentioning. Okay. So no one can make you feel anything. You can call me an idiot. Sometimes people do on YouTube. They go, okay, jackass, blah, blah, blah. It's okay. I have compassion for that person anyway. And I don't know why they found me. I don't know what they needed to hear. I don't know why, you know, um, and every once in a while, I have somebody who does that, and uh, three years later, they're studying with me, you know, and that's my journey of, as a teacher of compassion and a journey as a healer of practicing compassion because everybody has the light within them. So sexual energy is your energy. When you start running out of sexual energy that can be further refined into through alchemy into a finer gold substance, into a higher level of consciousness, into a higher vibration of love or intuition or whatever the case may be, 
um, then you have to learn to channel that sexual energy and you have to have it. So many people in the world today, from what I see anyway, um, they have these uh, extremes with sex and sexual energy. One extreme would be sexual repression, let's say. And then on the other end, you have um, um, pornography, let's say, and dysfunctional sexual activities, including things like rape and things like taking advantage of um, kids and uh, innocent uh, uh, people who, you know, the bad guys are manipulating, so to speak, okay? So... What is this game over? If we call it a game of life, what is this game all over? In other words, what are we what are we really competing over? What are we competing for? And so on. It's energy, isn't it? It's all energy. It's all energy. And what does a Buddha know that the average person does not know? The, what the Buddha knows, so to speak, the Christ knows, the Lao Tzu knows, the Qigong master theoretically knows is that the source of happiness lives within me this is really a game of energy um, there's my energy and then there's other people's energy and then there's universal energy and we're all connected in that universal energy and there are different ways to work with that energy and again as I say in my book everything that I do uh, is either going to add to my energy system or it's going to take away from it if I manipulate you, if I take advantage of you, uh, that kind of thing, um, then that's a bad, as the Buddhists would say, not a great karma for me. And uh, it's going to come back to me, you know. And the Christians on the level that they do, they say it too. It's in the Bible. That which ye sow, ye shall reap. And, um, and uh, we typically reap it in the moment that we sow it, in the moment that we give a bad thing. We feel bad. And we think we got maybe somebody, they think they got away with it or whatever, but really you can't get away with feeling bad. If you feel bad, you're going to keep feeling bad. Then you do it again. Then you feel bad. Then you do it again. You feel bad. At some point, that all becomes your karma. And at some point, you got to clean it up. So it's all a game over energy. And what I want you guys to know is that with the Qigong practices and so forth, it's about you keeping your energy, gathering your energy, hanging on to your energy, building your energy, building your chi account. When it goes down, build it back up. Okay, so part of that practice, there are many practices that I share with you during Qigong classes, Qigong workshops, etc. One of the other ideas that I wanted to share with you, you here today is sexual alchemy. Your sexual energy is your energy. It's nobody else's energy. It's your energy. And... Uh, Again, most people don't uh, know where the middle ground is, so to speak, with sexual energy or sexual practices, but it would be in the Taoist uh, practices of sexual energy cultivation. For example, that is one of the things that is uh, more known about on the planet, Montak Chia, which is, I believe, spelled M-A-N-T-A-K, and then last name C-H-I-A, okay? has become a well-known Qigong teacher teaching about sexual alchemy. And back when I was uh, 21 years old, I came across one of his books and began reading that along with a lot of my other studies. And I began practicing um, what some term to be sexual Kung Fu from the time I was 21 years old. And that has to do with using the sexual energy and cultivating the chi of that throughout your body. And it has to do with cultivating that energy for yourself, by yourself, which is a different label, by the way, than masturbation. And uh, it's an energy self-cultivation self technique. And in the Taoist practices, it wasn't uh, looked at in the same way. So when we think about it as our life force and our longevity, um, I'm going to start with the male because I am a male, and then I'll just go into also the female briefly and point you in some directions with these kinds of things. But 
your sexual energy is your energy. So when it gets stuck down there and it's not moving and you just try and neglect it or push it down or repress it or eat, eat food on top of it and you're not really in touch with your own sexuality or you limit sexuality to sex, um, all of these different kinds of ideas, which we so do in the Western culture, for sure, in my opinion, uh, we need to learn to loosen up a bit. It doesn't mean we need to go have sex with everybody. Um, but from a Qigong master standpoint, I recommend working with your own sexual energy. Check out one of Montauk Chia's books. Um, that will help you get an idea of what I'm talking to you about because I'm not going to go into all the details about that right now, but I will point you in the direction of a book. You can read more about it. Um, and again, his is the primary body of work that uh, a lot of people, like I said, are, know about and so on. Um, it's a good, good starting point. Um, but working with your sexual energy, cultivating it. If you are a male, this means not just ejaculating, not just letting go of your billion plus sperm. Um, in France, they call that every time a man ejaculates, they call it a mini death. So some people ask me, you know, how do you, at 53 years old, how do you look like you do? How do you stay healthy like you do? Um, how do you stay young like you do? How do you keep up with the 28 year olds or whatever, or the 25 year olds or the 23 year olds at your uh, martial arts school, for example, or whatever? Well, that's one of my secrets. So um, anyway, there's more details about that. It doesn't mean holding back for a male, every single ejaculation, but there are, are things that you can do to cultivate your energy. So anyway, check out Montox Chia's book if you're interested in that. Um, females, you have uh, a little benefit here in that when you do work with your sexual energy and you orgasm and so on, you don't have to worry about losing your energy in the same way that a male does in that way. And uh, jumping ahead here is that if you are wanting a soulmate, if you are wanting a lover, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, any, any of that kind of stuff, then I highly recommend learning to work with yourself and your own body and your own being because your partner is going to match who you are. They're going to match what you do, what, what you practice, you know, like when I met my soulmate, and we're going to get into that story, when I met my soulmate and a bunch of you, some of you anyway, on YouTube anyway, know her, uh, Tanya. And when you met her, okay, because she's the president of our company, Qigong Awareness, and she is a doctor of oriental medicine, and she has studied shamanic practices and medical intuitive practices and Tai Chi and Taekwondo. And anyway, just like me, she's very steeped in all of these different kinds of things. And she's a licensed acupuncturist and healer and intuitive, and she's psychic. So anyway, um, uh, so I met my match on the level that I did, okay? And, but in order to do that, in order to meet your match, so to speak, you have to work with you, okay? So that means working with your own sexual energy. Underst like when I told Tanya, I said about, uh, for example, I said, oh, you know, sexual kung fu, this and this. She goes, oh yeah, Montauk Chi, I know, da 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 da. Like she knew, she'd been studying it, she knew about it, like, you know, so, as you study and you practice these things and you become the person that you think you would want somebody else to be, well, become that person first and then you'll meet that person and then you can partner with that person. Okay, so there's some different ideas running there. Um, think about that. One of the main ideas, of course, is working with your own energy, all of it, building that energy, working with your own sexual energy, not seeing it as a dirty, not seeing it as a dirty thing or something. Even if you're older and you've passed your years of, you know, falling in love and sexual energy like you had in your 20s. What is that, by the way, anyway? That's hormones, guys. Life hormones running through your body. So if you're older and you're practicing Qigong, in fact, there's a person that I work with who's 80 plus years old. And when I started working on her and I started doing the medical Qigong treatments, she pulled me aside and privately said to me, can I ask you a question? She said, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to ask this. She said, but you know, I'm like 80 years old and like we've been doing these treatments and I'm feeling energy through my body. And like, I feel things down there that I haven't felt in like 
whatever she said, you know, many years, I can't remember how many it was, but she was like so many years. And she's like, it's almost like it's things are coming back to life. That's what you want. If you want healing in your body, you actually need that sexual energy to come back to life. And, and again, that sexual energy not necessarily has to be used for sex. It'll get you up and down the stairs, okay? It will move you through your life. It has to do with your creativity. If you're going to paint or do whatever it is that you're going to do, you need that sexual energy and you need to work with that energy and cultivate that energy. So uh, different ways to look at this, different ideas to think about. But this is uh, some directions that you may want to head and some things you may want to check out um, because... Again, even in the sense of uh, understanding your own pleasure centers and your own pain centers and understanding what brings you pleasure and uh, helps you to cultivate and keep your energy, all of that's very important. The Taoists did not separate these things, okay? Uh, it was literally like meditation, uh, sexual practices, Qigong practices. I mean, it was all combined. Yes, over here, maybe more sexual over here, maybe more. Uh, isolated practices where you're practicing meditation by yourself over here you're practicing sex practices by yourself then you're practicing sex pra practices with someone else um, but it's all forms of alchemy and all forms of practice so there's our discussion of sex and sexuality there on that level and how it relates to chi now um, because this has gone on uh, for 26 minutes now and I don't want to totally uh, keep going on if you weren't prepared to watch anything longer. I'm going to do part two of this sex, shamanism, and soulmates, okay? So we're going to just call this part one. So in conclusion of part one, go ahead and pick up one of Montauk Chia's books on sexual kung fu, something, one of those titles or something like that. There's also specific titles for women, one for man, one for a woman, one for partners, etc., uh, anyway, check out that body of work, check out the microcosmic orbit, which we work with in Qigong uh, class sometimes and so on. And uh, do a little research on that. Start to cultivate your own chi, cultivate your own energy and recognize and realize that your energy begins with sexual energy. Hopefully that's a mind blow in a good way for you today. Stick around. Part two uh, will be going up right after this one does. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care. See you in part two.